look, another Kimi Antonelli video saying he should be an F1 right now. Actually, you should probably lay off the kid. Despite the fact that Toto's betting the farm on him, not wanting to make the same mistake they did with Max. So yes, another young driver is being lauded as the next big star of Formula 1. And it almost seems like we're trying to find a brand new one every year, like we haven't got enough big stars already. Heck, we're still processing all of the stuff that's been happening with Oscar Piastri's rookie season, and how it's been one of the most successful since Lewis Hamilton's rookie season. No, we're not getting into that debate today! And Toto Wolff is sensing the growing anticipation to see the 17-year-old driver in Formula 1 very soon. But he's also pumping the brakes on the move to ensure that expectations aren't overblown and then are underdelivered. Much like how we saw with Pascal Verlein, Marcus Ericsson, and even Romain Grosjean, them in their day being touted as future Formula 1 world champions, or at least being very good Formula 1 drivers. You could even add the likes of Mick Schumacher to the list for slightly different reasons, legacy getting the better of him. And also we might see that same impact with the likes of Kimi Raikkonen's boy Robin, or even Sebastian Montoya, JPM's boy, coming into Formula 1 eventually. Now if you are still wondering who on earth is Andrea Kimi Antonelli, I'll give a very short summary since many other YouTube videos have gone into great detail in every single movie is made and in some cases what he's had for breakfast. In short, he basically has won everything in a very convincing fashion, including Formula Regional, as well as the Italian and German F4 Championships. Just look at all these P1s, it's amazing! And it's not like Mercedes have suddenly just gone, oh my god, this kid is amazing, quickly we have to actually sign on the dotted line. You go back to 2019, and there are mutterings of Kimi Antonelli throughout the world of the internet and journalistic newspaper cuttings that Kimi Antonelli has been partnered up with Mercedes. This has been a long-term thing. Kimi Antonelli is so ingrained in the Mercedes camp, he even drove briefly for Nico Rosberg's karting academy. No wonder his hair looks so good. But what you need to know right now is that he is good. He is really, really good. And he is going to be extremely confusing for any Italian Formula 1 fans. He's Italian, but he's driving for Mercedes. And yet he's driving for Prima. What am I supposed to do? But what I need to tell you right now is that Kimi Antonelli is compensating for something. Why Mercedes has a junior division in the first place. No, 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 I'm not going to be going into bashing Max Verstappen or anything, but the Verstappening of 2014 came about simply for the fact that Mercedes were not prepared for such a talent to enter Formula 1 at that time. Max was making waves in karting and was just about to move into cars, and understandably, F1 teams would be interested, including Mercedes. But they did not really have a healthy junior division ready, whereas Red Bull, the junior team, was healthy. In fact, you could say it was at its peak, having shown that the likes of Sebastian Vettel could then go on to win multiple world championships with them. There was room for Max at Red Bull, but there wasn't at Mercedes. Williams wasn't really an option either, because Valtteri Bottas and Felipe Massa were doing quite well there, and the Williams camp had a decent amount of autonomy there. And also, realistically, do you really think that in 2014 they were going to take a gamble on Max Verstappen when they had Nico Rosberg and Lewis Hamilton, and then the season they had in 2014? No, 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 no. This was before all of the success came about, so they couldn't take that risk, and they certainly wouldn't have taken that risk going forward. So instead, Toto offered Max Verstappen and Jos Verstappen the chance of maybe partnering up with one of their GP2 teams and then see what happens there. No, Red Bull had room, and so they went there. Not to mention for the fact that Helmut Marko and Jos Verstappen, they had been talking for a while, and there turned out to be room, and then jean eric Verne was pushed to the wayside, him being the major casualty with Max joining in. Because yes, Max Verstappen was not a long-term Red Bull junior driver. And it wasn't like Jev could then get the call up to the Red Bull senior team when Vettel went to Ferrari. No, Daniel Kvyat then got that plum. Heck, those FP1 sessions where Max took part in that Toro Rosso, jean eric Verne was effectively looking at his replacement and then realising, I, I cannot compete with that. But considering how well Jev's done in Formula E, I'm sure he's not losing sleep over it. So, understandably, not long after losing Max Verstappen to Red Bull, Mercedes set up a junior team. Yeah, it was that spontaneous. Toto and Co weren't going to let something like that happen again, and at least be ready with some kind of academy since they didn't have one to begin with. So here we are. Right now, the path is really clear for Kimi Antonelli to be next in line to join Formula 1. Since the likes of Frederick Vesti is now in European Le Mans, having seemingly given up on his dream to become the next Danish driver after Kevin Magnussen, and you just get the feeling that everyone is gearing up for Antonelli to be in Formula 1 considering how successful he is, and how successful Max Verstappen was in karting and then going into cars, and the massive steps up and skips that Max had going straight to Formula 3, 
And even going back to Kimi Raikkonen, he'd only been racing in Formula Renault, then got the call up to Sauber, and he was under supervision by the FIA for the first four races. Can you remember that? That Kimi was on probation. Yeah, that Kimi. All of this hype is really good PR for any team to have, but I do appreciate the fact that Toto is at least aware of not wanting to rush into things and making some very spontaneous and rushed calls, because that's exactly what happened with one of Mercedes Junior Team's original lineup members. Yeah. Pascal Verlein was the OG Mercedes Junior driver. Pascal Verlein was being lined up to replace either Hamilton or Rosberg eventually, and he was making waves in Formula One. It wasn't like he was a bad driver. He was doing the business at Sauber, saving that team, in fact, in 2017 from scoring zero points. Sauber were really bad that year. The next team up above them had 25 more points than them. But his two seasons in Formula One, that was not enough to get him any kind of safety net in Formula 1 due to three complicating factors. First, there was Nico Rosberg retiring early, leaving two seasons before his recently renewed contract was meant to expire in 2018, which meant then Valtteri Bottas got plucked from Williams. Remember, Toto is very much aware about the goings-on and happenings at Grove because he still is a partial shareholder. Bottas probably got the plum because it seemed like he was a good team player, and after all the turmoil they had with Rosberg and Hamilton, they needed somebody who didn't rock the boat. And Valtteri is quite good at not rocking the boat. And then, to complicate things even further, who does the Mercedes Junior team hire in 2017 to be the next future star? George Russell. And then what happens in Formula 3 and then Formula 2? George is quite clearly going to become the next hot ticket item for Formula 1, and thusly, Pascal Verlein just wasn't cutting the mustard. Now I bet you, had Rosberg carried on until 2018 and either moved on, or more shockingly, Lewis Hamilton just bailed entirely, having given up on everything, or that team, then I bet you, by that time, after about three-ish seasons in Formula 1, Pascal would have gotten the call-up to be at Mercedes, and the plan would have come to fruition. And then eventually, George Russell would have partnered him in a couple of years' time. But unfortunately, due to spontaneous things happening, and then Nico announcing his retirement not long after he got the title, it threw a spanner in the works for not only Mercedes, but also Pascal's future at one career. So yeah, no more room at Mercedes, so he then eventually went off to Porsche in Formula E and is doing quite well for himself, and at the moment he's currently leading the championship. If anybody's watching, thanks TNT Sports. Simply put, it was bad luck that saw Verline out of F1, not a skill deficiency. So that is something that Toto Wolff is probably remembering, that just because a driver is good doesn't necessarily mean that he has a long-term career in Formula 1 guaranteed. There has to be room for that driver to then eventually succeed an outgoing driver. And now, it's gotten even more complicated at Mercedes since Lewis has decided to stick around for probably four seasons longer than was originally anticipated, and then George Russell is getting antsy for the fact that he was supposed to be the next leader of Mercedes, and now he's still having to wait in the wings for even longer. Toto's needing to juggle a lot of things, and then you hear the news about Esteban Ocon still being on Mercedes' radar, Mick Schumacher then being brought in at the last minute since Ferrari dumped him, and considering how Mercedes and Michael Schumacher, they were so attached, of course they're not going to get rid of him anytime soon, and then you just feel like, well, there's clearly a lot of talent at Mercedes, and Kimi's now coming in, and yet he hasn't got the experience, and what are they going to do with him? So understandably, Toto is having to be really careful here because they don't want to get rid of him. And with the Italian connections, Ferrari not picking him up sooner? They want to make the most of this and not let anyone else pilfer him. It could easily fall apart if Kimi Antonelli is rushed into Formula 1 too rapidly, and then other drivers make really rash decisions. So long as things continue the way they are, and things don't suddenly change in a really bizarre and surprising manner, and they're patient with Antonelli in Formula 2, then things could turn out quite nicely. But in theory, they could have thrusted him into F1 right now. Technically, he does have the super license points to participate, since he was the Formula Regional Champion. That's 25 points for first place, thank you very much. And then he had those two F4 championships, which are 18 points respectively. He now has nearly 70 super license points garnered since 2022, which means that he could almost apply for Formula 1 twice. Yeah. That's a lot of points, and sure, they do expire over time, but that's not for a good three years, and he can then spend some time in Formula 2 and gain a little more just to keep the bank topped up. But thankfully, we're not getting that. Toto isn't that desperate, since 
He has not participated in an FP1 session, so he hasn't gotten the kilometres necessary. And unlike Logan Sargent, Kimi probably does know what a kilometre is. And also, we didn't see Antonelli take part in the Abu Dhabi Young Driver Test. I'm so glad that that didn't happen because it could have been so tempting for Toto Wolff just to get on his hands and knees and beg James Vowles to take Kimi Antonelli on to learn under Alex Albon's wing and push out the likes of Logan for the fact that he has the points he could have done it. But thankfully, that didn't happen. We will definitely see Kimi Antonelli participate in an FP1 session next year. Both of those sessions will be taken up by Kimi Antonelli for Mercedes to see what he can do. The world will be watching this Italian and Toto will also be keeping an eye on what happens in that and Formula 2. And also what his drivers are doing because any sudden changes could make things drastically difficult, similar to the Verline situation. Supposing both drivers carry on for another two years until 2027, icing out the seats for Kimi, leaving him either at Williams for longer than he would like, or perhaps the likes of Ferrari to come swooping in and take him if things don't work out with Oli Behrman. You know, because Italian, or even worse. Dr. Helmut Marco suddenly getting an itchy finger and then deciding to act like Mr. Magpie and swooping in on Kimi like they did with Nick DeVries. And look how that turned out. It's still one of the most bizarre decisions the Doctor has ever made in Formula One. The same concerns come if George Russell decides that he's had enough of waiting for Lewis to go away and he skips town to either Aston Martin or back to Williams in case Albon gets post or something or goes to partner him at Williams. Or if both George and Lewis go at the same time, then there's this massive power vacuum that happens at Mercedes and they desperately have to fill it with any experienced driver they have on their roster, which would naturally guarantee you Esteban Ocon will get called to Mercedes to lead that team since there wouldn't be anyone that has the plenty of experience in their roster. And then you might even get Mick Schumacher coming back in. You would need two experienced drivers to plug the hole if you wanted to be safe. Those two would be quite happy with that decision since they get on quite famously. But that would also then mean that Kimi Antonelli would not be getting into that team anytime soon, and then he would be kind of stuck in a rut. But then again, it might not be so bad because other teams might be tempted. As you can probably tell, there's a lot of careful planning going on here, and Mercedes really do not need any more headaches. From what I can tell, Toto Wolff's ideal plan is thus. Get Kimi Antonelli into Formula 2, right when the cars have been refreshed to be far more relevant to modern Formula 1 machinery. That is until 2026, when the rules change in Formula 1 again, and the F2 cars suddenly become irrelevant again. But by that time, it won't matter so much as Antonelli will have had two seasons in Formula 2, and probably would, ideally, have won the title in 2025, to then step up to Williams for a brief spell, and then get himself settled in, maybe for a year or two, before then getting the call up to the top team depending on the moves of the current drivers. That is the ideal path, the ideal solution for Kimi to slowly grow his skills in Formula 2 and then get a seat at Williams for a little bit, so that means there's not too much pressure going on, and then maybe get the call up to Mercedes. But then Kimi Antonelli might end up being a, a little too good. Because what happens if he wins the 2024 Formula 2 championship at the first time of asking? You know that backwards rule where the F2 championship can no longer participate in that championship because naturally, historically, they've, they'd be guaranteed a place in Formula 1. But look what's happened in the last few years. Mick Schumacher being the only Formula 2 champion to then find himself in a Formula 1 seat the following season, the rest of them having to end up being in reserve driver purgatory. So if Kimi does end up being too good and gets the title, then Williams would have to take him and probably sacrifice Logan Sargent, their own academy driver, for it. Unless, of course, the rumours about Alex Albon being unhappy at Williams and wanting out to go to another team happen, which in that case might leave room for Antonelli and Sargent to stay. And then you would have Kimi Antonelli slamming Logan Sargent into oblivion, a rookie taking out the former rookie. I'm sorry, my American friend. I know that Logan Sargent is good, but... I don't think he's Kimi Antonelli good. His junior career is not nearly as glowing. So what happens if we get a Verline situation and one of the current Mercedes drivers retires or moves on? Would Kimi get the call up? If it was George Russell sensing danger from Kimi and then realizing the inevitability of Lewis Hamilton sticking around for infinity, then maybe Kimi Antonelli might try and learn a thing or two by Lewis Hamilton's hand, so long as he isn't too good and then threatens Lewis Hamilton maybe, but it's a possibility. But if Lewis Hamilton were to retire and then leave potentially George to lead the team, then I don't see Kimi Antonelli being called up because there would be a huge amount of tension. Russell, the lead star, 
then gets effectively his replacement coming in as a second driver, oh, that will cause friction because clearly it's causing friction already with Lewis. It's become clear that Mercedes just simply don't do rookies in their car. They need to have had at least a few years in F1 first, which is why Pascal bit the dust and got supplanted by Bottas. Odds are that if Lewis Hamilton were to suddenly retire, you'd get Esteban Ocon in that seat, or you might get Mick Schumacher taking that seat, depending on what happens in WEC. Of course, I could be wrong with all of this, and Kimi Antonelli does really well at his first season at Williams, and they end up fifth in the constructors, with Alex Albon and Kimi Antonelli working really closely together, being very happy with one another, and then Williams turn out to have one of their best seasons in many, many years, and then Antonelli is quite happy to stay at Williams for the foreseeable future. That would make Toto very happy indeed, and therefore just allow him to gain more experience to then get the call up to the senior team, that is depending Williams don't end up being better than Mercedes eventually because James Fowles is proving to be a really, really good team principal. But all this could come at the expense of the Williams Academy's own drivers, which would be really tough considering Valls really wants to nurture the Williams young talent, and partly why he kept Logan for another year, fucking the trend of recent years to rush rookies into Formula 1 and then dumping them after one year. To find out why I think keeping Logan Sargent for that second season was a good idea for Williams to undertake, you will want to watch this video next because there are a lot of good theories here. James knows what he's doing.